哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒哒Right. Okay. So, what I want to kind of、um, cover、um, here in session zero is kind of like usual session zero stuff.、Um, what do you guys want to get from the game? What do I want to get from the game?、Um, a little bit about kind of、um, water deep. Just to make sure we're all kind of like same page with regards to that,、um, and then. Kind of a little bit about the mechanics of the characters that you're thinking about playing and stuff, and also just establish the relationships and the kind of like the setup at the start of the game. Really,、um, I'm not particularly following chat. So if、um, oh, hang on, may have a camera solution. Okay, so if Rebecca says anything relevant, then let me know.、Um, so in terms yeah, of yeah, we'll do. So in terms of the setup of the game. The year that we'll be starting play will be probably a year after the、um, TOA finished.、Um, so TOA has happened. It's that is about the only Wizard of the Coast adventure stuff that has happened、um, in this.、Um, so you guys could have done SKT kind of off in the north,、um, I guess.、Um, so the Death Curse has recently finished. The Champions of Chult. Of say Faerun,、um, and the the kind of like there hasn't been the、um, the attack by Tiamat and her horde of dragons or anything like that. That's possibly a still event to to kind of occur,、um, and kind of the stuff we have another、Ooh. video that would be Rebecca. I do believe no, my, no, I think that's Ben. That's Ben.、Oh, okay, Rebecca's grey, Ben's red. <laughs> ben enters the battle. <laughs> Diego swings into battle. <laughs>、yeah. Oh, there we go! No, all for years. Good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Now we know why it's taking him so long. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not sensing when my giant box swaps. Okay, Ben, what you missed? Liquid、basically. copper. Oh my God! What are you doing?、Um, so, it's the year after the TOA.、Um, so the champions of the Chult have been through Waterdeep.、Um, there's them that went back there.、Um, the Death Curse has ended. The champions of the Chult are kind of like heroes of the realms, etc., etc.、Um, nothing else of any. Where's he gone? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> nothing else. <laughs> Use his bonus action to stealth. <laughs> Nothing else, <laughs> else of any kind of like、um, material activity has happened in Waterdeep.、Um, in terms of、um, the fact of the matter is, there hasn't been the Horde of Dragons attacking or anything like that.、Um, in terms of what's happened in Waterdeep,、um, Lord Neverember was ousted、um, what a few years before,、um, and he went back to Neverwinter、uh, to rebuild that. Because he was shit. <laughs> And Leryl、um, is the open lord of Waterdeep.、Um, oh well, never mind. Oh well,、no. I'm still here.、Oh. I am still here. <laughs> <laughs> so the Death Curse has been a thing,、um, and the end of the Death Curse has been a thing as well. So what I'm really interested in in this game is kind of the characters being grounded in Waterdeep. It's going to be one through twenty. We're going to do the full range of levels, including the Undermine stuff. Clearly, I haven't got. Oh, this is really fucking. This is going to be awkward to, to kind of YouTube this with frames around people because everybody keeps moving. Well, <laughs>、um, like、I've got a bigger picture now on my screen. <laughs> oh, it used to be you, Dan, and now it's Josh. Oh, how are you feeling about that? Yeah, why is Josh the centre of attention? No, Paul's in the middle of mine.、Like, this is it. My, it's right on mine. Paul's in the middle. Well, on mine, it's like it was. It was Dan. Big at the bottom, like. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was Dan, but now it's Josh. <laughs> okay. So, how, anyway, Josh, how are you feeling? 
Uh, I can barely walk. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> my, my, my big toe is black. Really? This is more from, yeah, I think this is more from Thursday's football. Oh, okay, fair enough. And I've definitely pulled, like, something in my fight. So I've hobbled around all today. Uh-huh. Yeah, right, fair Ooh. enough. <laughs> Josh joined, uh, joined me playing footy with my mates yesterday evening. Oh. You guys sound like nice, apparently. <laughs> in what way? <laughs> no, I'm just inexperienced. Uh, my boots, I think, are too small, sort of crippled me. Yeah, it's good fun. I think Rebecca may be joining us. Yes. Oh, like here that. we go. Drum roll, please. I'm not sure if he has a microphone, though. That's the only other thing. Yes, so we can basically have salad. I have, dr- right, I have drum pencil sticks. <laughs> <laughs> that just breaks the lead. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll give it a couple of seconds. Oh. It's okay, guys, because I got a scroll of pedigree. A scroll? What, pedigree chum? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, clearly not. Okay, so, so moving on then. Um, so the big draw for me has been grounded in water deep. Um, kind of having the interaction there, kind of building the characters, the RP around that. So I intend to run it kind of like in pseudo sandbox style. So it'll be, mm. there's no ticking clock. There's no kind of like you've got to be doing this thing by the end of this time frame or anything like that. Um, so it'll be looking for you guys to take the initiative, building on your character stories and what you want to do. So don't, oh, oh, hello. Hello, Rebecca. Hello. Do you have a microphone, microphonic? <laughs> if not, right? get get it from the guy oh, behind you. <laughs> I want to hear what he wants to say. <laughs> What's his story? So, what is your thought <laughs> Water Deep and its Water Nobles? What's my what, sorry? Two in the party. Uh, I'm going about Rebecca's brother. Uh, All right, bloody <laughs> dandy. Um, so, so, I'll be looking so for you guys. Yeah. So I'll be looking for you guys to take the initiative quite a bit. So if you've got like plans you want to do or you want to explore stuff, don't feel oh it's not part of the adventure, therefore we can't do it. Just kind of crack on and do it really. Um, like if you're like, well we're going into Under Mountain, it would make sense. We've got the resources to try and hire a team of thirty people to go with us. Well, you can do that. I'm not going to stop you. You know, we'll just play out the logical Oops. consequences of those decisions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Many die. <laughs> And, and, and the most guy in the entrance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How many came out? Not thirty. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you a clue. Yeah. It's less than thirty. <laughs> um. An interactive member of the city. It's a big city. There's masses of stuff going on. So even if we kind of go off a little bit of the beaten track, that's that's cool. Dragon Heist as a as a kind awesome. of like adventure one through five we could play that one through seven one through ten if we really wanted to and there's kind of like lots and lots of encounters and small encounters and half sessions and stuff like that that we can just kind of like be plugging in so <coughs> so out of character kind of what what essentially happens with dragon heist is it's, it's kind of like um a three or a four act adventure by and large you kind of get introduced into Waterdeep a little bit with a with a starting adventure. That starting adventure rewards you with a property in Waterdeep. So a bit of a spoiler alert. And that property you you can kind of run as a business or do whatever you want with it. Um, essentially, is that yeah. So I think that's 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 <laughs> relatively spoiled through the internet. And I think a couple of the the kind of streams that ran it as the intro kind of did a bit of that. So that's cool. So be thinking yeah, about how the you... initial announcement did mention it. Yeah, yeah. So so then you, we can we can we can use that as the base within Water Deep, and you can kind of do what whatever you want to do with that. Um, and it'll be quite fun to start to develop that and so on. Um, and then essentially the the heist isn't really a heist in the way that like Ocean's Eleven is a heist or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's there's a substantial amount of gold hidden somewhere in Water Deep, and you guys need to try to to recover that or to stop other people recovering it and that's where depending upon what factions you you choose to join or how you know where, where your interests are and your alliances and your allegiances and such like that's where you kind of start to be forced almost to choose sides 
Um, and then you need to try to get into wherever that, that money is, find out where that money is, get into where that money is and recover it and then deal with it however you, you kind of want. And then mm. there's 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 no soft segue into or hard segue into under mountain. Um so it's not like kind of um if you choose A, B, C and D, then this is what happens in under mountain. Essentially at the end of the hard cover it just says you get a note saying come to the Union Paul, um, you know, do you want to go into under mountain? So it is kind of a, almost like even though one's one through five and the other's six through twenty in the same physical location, that they're not a continual story, as far as I know. I'm clear I've not read Man Mage. But I don't think that they would be like that. But your characters I would expect to want to take from one through twenty. And a large part of I think of the, the kind of fun for you guys will be taking a character from level one and playing them all the way through to level yeah. twenty. So what I would say and what I would strongly emphasize is if you're not happy or comfortable with some aspect of your character, whether it's the fiction or whether it's the mechanics, the you know, the class you've chosen or what have you, it's gonna it's gonna be disappointing. Because everybody else or a lot of, you know, the rest of the group are gonna be like, Well, these are the guys I took from level one and you'll feel a sense of affinity to them and if you're kinda of like around level three going, mm, I'm not so keen on this, you'll probably mm. feel a little bit of a disconnect out. So if that means that we're not got key roles, then we haven't got key roles. <laughs> you know? And you have to then plan <laughs> and, and kinda of like you know, work around that how, however you kind of you know, you want to do. I'd rather not have a tank and everybody be happy with the characters they're playing and we just have to maybe I have an NPC that I play as a GM NPC or maybe we get some hirelings in or maybe you get you know a follower or, or whatever. You know, we can solve those problems in game. Um the problem we can't solve in game is somebody feeling slightly frustrated that their character is not as fun as they thought it would be. Or okay, so. Aaron's characters. <laughs> yeah. Also, oh, also I would say yeah, like um Kind of at seventh level, um, wizards start to be able to compensate for a lot of stuff, so we can start dishing out some decent conjuration then, yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the only other thing that I would say is that um, Waterdeep is a kind of mature, um, kind of well-governed city that has had to deal with dickhead adventurers across the course of a thousand <laughs> and a few hundred years. <laughs> Okay, the people that run that place know how to manage dickhead adventurers and have done so successfully. So all the dickhead adventurer shit that you think you know you would ordinarily be trying to pull, these guys have seen it several thousand times a night. Um, so they have kind of um, processes, learning structures put in place to manage dickhead adventurers. In the second edition, it used to be Kelvin Blackstaff is at least 10 levels higher than the highest PC, just sorts it out. In, in this edition, it's, it's a little bit kind of like, you know, more structured, a bit more thought out. Um, but as residents of Waterdeep, you kind of know this and you'll understand and you'll, you will, even if you don't adhere to the laws of the city, you will respect the laws of the city and you will understand you know, that there will be consequences meted out kind of or attempted to be meted out through that way um and once you've got people like Leryl, um who is kind of you know, the open lord and is essentially immortal given she's a chosen mistra and she's been around a long long time she's a powerful archmage and she will get involved if necessary so so it's kind of like just just think about that so some of the stuff to call out is it's it's incredibly unusual for a citizen of waterdeep to go about obviously armed and obviously armoured, um, because it's just not needed within the walls of the city. And the 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 attitude is, if you're armed and armoured, and you have trouble, by and large, you've invited it upon yourselves. You know, you, clearly, you were looking for trouble. It's, it's like going down into, in, out into town with a knife. If you get stabbed, mm -hmm. and you, you've got a knife of your own, well, you were kind of gunning for it, weren't you? It's on your head, be it. So you can clearly, you know, there are ways around this so kind of you know, certain um, priesthoods will have their ceremonial dress be plate mail you know plate armor the Tormites do that for instance so it would not be completely out of order for a follower of Torm or you know, other deities to say well this is my my clerical dress and they kind of get a bit of latitude for that if you're a cleric of Torm found in the dark ward at 2am in a tavern and you're fully plate armored <laughs> the city watch are going to be like really mate what the fuck? The other thing to I bear in mind. Like that's a warning for us. This is heads up. <laughs> that's a warning for Darian. Knocking exactly. around, that knocking around with a twelve-foot longsword on your back, just cause is basically saying I expect there to be a rumble 
and therefore you've kind of you know you're half at least half guilty for it. So you go, no, they jumped to us. The watch are going to be like, yeah, but you're carrying that fucking thing, aren't you? So you know clearly you're out there. Um, so just just think about that. It's it's a much more modern setup. It's not a frontier city. The the walls are pretty secure. It's never been kind of like you know successfully taken over by any enemies. These guys are are, are citizens of a law abiding, by and large kind of city. Now if you've got a concealed weapon or a dagger or something, you know, something sensible for self defence, nobody's really going to be you know upset about that. If you're you know kind of um, expecting to go out for shenanigans and you're kind of tooling yourself up like um, Neo in the Matrix about to go and rescue Morpheus, then yeah, you, <laughs> you're going to kind of have some problems. Or, or at least if like you're caught... Armor? <coughs> Sorry? What about like light, you know, like leather armour under a cloak? Would also be, known as uh, the, cloth the clothing of thieves. That's what it is. Um. <laughs> so, so, so it's a question. Do you, so that'd be obvious. <laughs> do, do you get caught? Okay. If you get caught, have you got a reasonable explanation? Have you ever? Have you actually committed a crime? Because again, mm. you know, it's a civilized city, so I reckon you're about to commit a crime. That's not. That's not especially legal, you know. So, so there is, there's a due process of law, um, but it, it'll just it could potentially kind of tilt somebody away from being friendly towards you, so they're being neutral towards you, um, and so on. Okay, um, and that that's just just generally the situation within within kind of Waterdeep. So if you think about it as a as a kind of like Victorian kind of like sit a in its in its emphasis you won't be too far far wrong um and that has a set of prejudices associated to it as well but the city watch are professional think about the city watch almost like the <coughs> metropolitan police you know they've been there they've mm. done that they've, they've, they've kind of been around the block quite a bit of time so i'll get off my my high horse now whenever you guys are locked in you know, the cells of um castle waterdeep <laughs> Wondering how you get there, I'll just go straight back to this recording and I'll just edit it and show it to you. Yeah. And I'll say that's why. <laughs> okay. I was, I was oh, wanting to say, when you said um, they're used to adventurers, I heard that the city guard here are like much tougher than the, your average city guard. Well, so they're like old video games where you start on a guard and just annihilate you. <laughs> yeah, it's all a bit Skyrim. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. City, city, city guard and Waterdeep are bosses. Um, so, uh, so yeah. let. Yeah. Distinction: The city watch are the police. The city guard are the military. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, so city just, watch just being aware, being aware of that, um, and also kind of they they recruit and the the kind of temples or the good aligned temples of of Wardy, well the legal temples of Wardy, I guess, and the um, majors that reside there and the clerics that reside there, they're all kind of like can be kind of like deputized into the watch if necessary. So it's not all unusual for somebody to kind of like go, right, go and get me the nearest cleric from the nearest temple and get them out here. And they would just do that because it's part of being the fabric of society. It's expected of them. And any majors that are members of the mage order, they could be grabbed by kind of a magister out in the city and said, right, okay, I need you to do blah, blah, blah. Um, so that's just all kind of like being, being worth kind of like knowing. Okay. Um, so shall we shall we talk about talk about the characters then? So shall we start with Dan and, um, and Martin? Kind of because I know you guys are, are playing kind of noble brothers. Do you want to just run us through what your your kind of setup is? <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. So <clears throat> we pictured having a, a water Davian noble house uh, whose kind of lineage is very um, entwined with having a wizard at the um, being the head of the family. It's like, it's, it's like a house of wizards, like very, very arcane focus, and basically they select the person to run instead of based off in the first one, being off the most powerful of the wizards. So basically, our two characters are brothers, but we're a bit at arms with each other because we both want this leadership role. Yeah. So basically, we are bickering brothers. We're basically going to be bantering. We're going to be trying to one up each other. Basically, have a massive dick measure. Kind of <laughs> so we pull off the biggest spells. So it's going to be a case of I cast with uh, as you missed what second level. Well, no, well I cast here at third level. <laughs> I killed three elves. Well, I killed four. <laughs> that sort of stuff. We're basically going to be by back and forth and. We do plan on later to sort of like work together a bit more, like maybe do some combo spells, just stuff like that. But for the most part, especially early levels, we're basically 
working together, but being kind of like, I'm better than you still. Yeah, we're so thinking you of... did well, but I did better. We're thinking of, like, the character arc, uh, at least in the beginning, being, like, um, kind of a cold uh, standoff, and then taking uh, that arc for our two characters and uh, having them be, like, actual brothers and um, caring about each other much more and not worrying about this power struggle as much is where we want that arc to end. We basically did say, though, that we're never going to be putting, we're going to put each other in harm or, like, leave anyone to each other to die. It's going to be like, okay, it's still my brother. I'm going to take you. Yeah. But I'm going to let you know about it. Yeah. Sort of thing. Like, oh, well, you would still be a badger. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have a mess with that. No, I'm going to end and save you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so when you say powerful, kind of, um, how, how, how do you measure that? Is it just kind of like, because I, you know, you could quite happily say that the spells within, um, uh, you know what kind of circle of spell you can cast, I guess, and therefore I can cast this spell, and therefore that's of a higher circle than the spells you can cast. I've been able to master the complexities of it. Is it as straightforward as that? As an analog for spell for, for kind of wizard level? Um, a bit. It was sort of like a. It was like the best. Not so much the best that cast the spell, but who used them the best yeah and sense. we're thinking like, that leadership plays into uh, selection a little bit as well so we have to play up the noble aspect as well a bit yeah okay what happens if you both yeah you know, who, who decides who's the most powerful father but he's yeah. missing <laughs> oh okay <laughs> Due to a uh, rival uh, family that has been sabotaging us which is our rival that we decided upon yeah not the dark blades it's not the Dark Blades. <laughs> no, it's, it's a rival with his family that sort of like been undermining our family in the sh- on the shadows, and basically it plays into our, both our backstories because Ryan's character is the elder brother and I'm playing as the younger brother, and the elder brother is basically a prodigy when it comes to wizardry. He's he just can do magic, but due to him being the eldest, he's basically had to run help with the family business because it's been struggling quite badly and hasn't had much time to study. Whereas my characters, basically due to the elder brother doing that, I've had all the free time to study, and I basically work my arse off to basically put myself on the same playing field. And so at the moment, we both consider ourselves still the best, but we're sort of out the same. I see a study montage. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Just... Uh-oh. Uh, uh, also uh, also um, what else? I feel like there's one more thing. Oh yeah, we want to leave the father's disappearance as ambiguous as possible. I know that's going to sound strange, but simply because if we die during Undermountain, I want one of us to be able to pick up the father. Or if we get like kind of mid late Undermountain, we can just have the father introduced as an NPC yeah. and uh, deal with the fallout of that and the brother's like reaction to yeah. the father be gone for so long, etc. Yeah. Okay, so so how do you know that? Okay, do you suspect or do you know is this rival family? We never really discussed too much into that, but it's like... Yeah, the sort of, rival's we, definitely got to be developed. <laughs> yeah. We, it, that we sort of, cause obviously, you wanted a rival from us, so we thought mm-hmm. this would be a cool idea. Yeah, it's a cool but idea. We haven't really put too much into it. I imagine it'd probably be like, you'd know, because they basically set up shop nearby, and some of your business goes out during the day, is flourishing. Like, it's probably some tough thing going off somewhere. Okay. Um, we could probably build off that in some way. Probably as we play, probably it more open to light, I imagine. Or it could be um, the last night or the last, yeah, the last meeting our father had was with this family. And um, mm. I don't know. You just okay, got well, to, so got to chat about this more. Why haven't you gone to the City Watch to say we think that those guys have kidnapped Daddy, Daddy O? There's no evidence. Isn't it the job of the watch, no though, to gather the evidence? You report the crime, you report your suspicions, they kind of go off and do what they need to do. Would you have reported the crime? Oh, okay, so let's start with that question. Would you have reported this as a crime? Probably did, but there was no evidence that yeah, okay. came to light. That We could definitely go, they did it, but, it's like, but we deep down, we know. Well, maybe... We do you want to have the father as a separate situation then like the father left and then during that period of time this other house has kind of like knocked us off our perch would that be better unless it unless it's like the, all the evidence you two have actually collected and thereby uh, it's now all 
circumstantial. Well, uh, what, what, what we could do... <laughs> uh, so so, so this, this sounds like a really cool kind of like story thread to be kind of like, you know, continually running through the campaign. You know, what happened to daddy -O? Um, either I've had more wine than I thought, or there's an earthquake over my Josh's. <laughs> no, it's sat on a thing and it gets really hot under the laptop. Like, mm. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool. Um, so, so, so I, I like the idea that kind of, uh, you know, the rival families established, they're kind of like, you know, competitors within the market, whatever. We need to talk about what that market is. Daddy O disappeared. Yeah. You guys have reported the crime. The investigation is underway. To you, it's self-evident. It's these bastards across the road. But the watch are like, well, do we have a due process? We have to do this. We have to do that. We have to do the other. And, and therefore, it may well be that you know, as we kind of go on, there's some story hooks that spin off of that, where you kind of get some evidence sent to you. And you take it to the watch, or the watch company. You know, that that kind of thing in the in the background. What it also does is it also explains why um, whatever mechanic to trigger the next. Um, head of the house hasn't been triggered because if daddy has only disappeared and there's no proof of his disappearance you can't kind of go and invoke a will you can't do this or you can't do that you can't do the other so it kind of like leaves it enough in limbo to allow the story to develop and then you know if one of you guys dies and you need to replace it with the character then well daddy can just reappear and you know give us the old terry Waite. do you guys remember terry Waite? does anyone know terry Waite? jesus christ no i am sure <laughs> <I know. laughs> I thought, I thought you were going to say Terry Wogan. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, um, he was the envoy to, <laughs> he was the, envoy to yeah. the Archbishop of Canterbury and he got kidnapped in um, Beirut or the Lebanon, in the Lebanon and he was like kidnapped for like six or seven years and then he got released in the mid-80s, maybe. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, so what is the business? What is the family business? I never really decided one hundred percent, but I was always thinking like arcane magic, like spell, like they they helped out casting spells, spell books, teaching magic, that sort of thing. But we never were one hundred percent. I don't know what Martin obviously wanted them to do. Yeah, I'm um, in a similar vein to that. Although the arcane stuff would have taken a hit recently, but I was thinking um, you could have really classy taverns as well. Or no, sorry, inns like with continual flames and them. Um, images across the the ceilings etc etc just every kind of spell that can last indefinitely <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah okay okay i think i think that kind of needs to be pinned down a little bit um for it to to be the flavor of the game if you're going to start to be dealing with kind of like magic trade you'll be almost in direct competition with a major skilled so you could do that, but just be aware that you won't be the most popular down at the guild. That's a lot of what they do. Um, the kind of like, you know, the trade in rare magical items, you know, that's not such a bad thing. Used to sponsor adventuring companies. Yeah, yeah, or maybe like, or like enchantment-based stuff, like enchanted mm -hmm. items and stuff. Well, what, what kind of, um, what school of magic would Daddy O or the, you know, the traditional family have been I think we mentioned do we mention on this no I, I, I thought the idea was that maybe like obviously because like you're going on duration I'm going to lose and the one of each family members could have been like with that like that could have been obduration mother could have been illusion I was um yeah I was just wanting to try and leave the father as ambiguous as possible, yeah, so that giving it, so scope. if the person stepped into it. Okay, idea then um, to kind of like put out there. How about that kind of like um, the the family business is um, is kind of a couple of things, I guess. Um, so I like the idea of inns and such like. So you you potentially have a set of you know a franchise of inns or a, a chain of inns, kind of like throughout the the sort of coast or the north or what have you. Um, and they kind of like you know, have a reputation um, of being mid to upper tier, which kind of causes its own problems so much as anything else. But they have like you know magic users on staff that use prejudication and that kind of spell and thaumaturgy to kind of like you know have a flavour to it. In um, one of the um, championships of 
um, chill kind of sessions when you went to the Hawk Winter Manor. There was that illusion on the ceiling that was kind of like you know, a silent image that was playing out like a like a cool cartoon. So you know, potentially that could be from your house. But the secret of those kind of like spells is only known to the head of the house, um, and therefore actually kind of you know that also gives the impetus to recovering Daddyo. Maybe the competitors are trying to move into that space with their own brand of it that's not quite as good but now they're the only people that can have it which would explain why there's been a drop in your your kind of revenues because you can't actually do that you get recurring monies from where they are at the moment but you can't maintain them you can't create new ones yeah so so that that's that feels like a cool kind of like you know link in if you if you guys are happy with yeah. That. yeah yeah okay. yeah that sounds good um animated visions, etc. cool and talk to me about your um, your personalities. So one's what studious and kind of you know has to head down and, and really put the time and effort in. The other is kind of like I mean, your magic comes to them. But is, is there anything more that we should know? Um, <clears throat> well, uh, if you have your personality traits and ideals and stuff re- ready, Dan, we could go down them and then I, talk about like the main differences between our characters. I did them. I had a rough idea of what I was going to my character as. So yeah, just, just a rough, yeah, just a very, you know, kind of like, you know, one paragraph summary of your characters would be useful. Okay. Um, well, I was thinking of, uh, so for my guy, um, I was kind of going personality traits. He tries to make use of every advantage and minimize all the kind of like drawbacks to them. Yep, yeah, okay. So he's like very much uh, playing the game. Yep. Yeah. Um, he also be- wants to become the greatest wizard alive, uh, and he's he's the one that um, is is that right, Dan? He's the one that uh, it comes easier to. Did yes, you say the, it comes easier to him? So he just it, it's almost natural. Like he just he can look. He takes it like almost straight away. If that makes sense, like so you've got to crawl and work your ass off. Yes. So basically, what it takes it took like make no to years of study. It probably takes you like weeks to like properly master. <laughs> I, like, I don't think it. I don't think it would be that but, different. But basically, um, but basically, you pick up spells quicker than me, and you was always better at them. Yeah. Um, but so I can't write that I put the extra effort in, whereas you was working the family business. I was just basically working at it the whole time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, for bonds, I want to. To make my house great again, uh, and I also have a soft spot uh, for a lover that clouds my judgment. Who's the lover? Um, I was wondering. I was wanting to either make it because because he does like to play the game. So I was wondering if I could make it either a uh, promising Diego, Diego's sister, <laughs> <laughs> a, a promising aspiring guild member, or maybe even like another mage from uh, the academy that we studied at. Yeah, okay. Rival house. Um, Ooh, a rival house. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll leave that with you. You can think about that. What, what you want to do? Okay, cool. So I'm getting the kind of like um, kind of efficiency. Let's weigh up the odds, you know, um, and let's execute with the aim of making this house great again. Um, yeah. Just nip down to John Lewis. Get some good quality <laughs> furniture in. <laughs> Yeah. Farrow, yeah, and, Farrow and ball paint on the walls and stuff. Oh, I was also wanting to say, Dan, um, do you want your character to be closer to the mother and mine to the father? Or yeah, do I was you thinking that? that. Yeah. I was thinking that. Um, so that's that's a, an aspect. And like the final thing I have is like my character feels very entitled to like most everything and is furious when someone stands in the way of his progress. He might not say it out loud, but he is yeah. going to remember it. <laughs> yeah, he holds a grudge. <laughs> okay, cool. And that's basically like the gist of it, yeah. Okay, um, Dan, do you want to give us the paragraph of yeah. your guy? So basically, for my character, on my like, Martins, he's a bit more hot-headed. He's, he wants to prove himself, and he's quite rash in his decisions. It's like he'll dive into things head-on without much thought about the consequences sometimes because he's there like I've got to put myself as a wizard so I'm going to run in there and start casting all magic off and 
sometimes leads him to make quite dumb decisions. Okay. Okay. Um, so obviously he's basically studied hard, he's worked hard, he wants to be the best. But he also wants to prove himself the best because still most of his family and the people know him always think of his older brother as the best. Oh my god! And he wants to like prove himself, so he's willing to jump in there. Are you right there, Ben? Yeah, you're the Luigi to Martin's Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that's the best way to sum it up. He's like, he's the younger one, he always gets overlooked. He's worked himself to be just as good, and he now he wants to prove himself, but he's basically, he's like, Oh, what's that? A fight's broke out. I'll go and help them. And he'll jump in without really thinking about it. And it might just be like an argument or something. Or, or it might be a massive battle between two rival guilds. Like, you never know. And he just a wizard dies and there's lots of magic in them. I love Rebecca's one. Yeah. <laughs> I was still thinking Ash and Gary Oak. Yeah. <laughs> That's quite good. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> I have no idea who those people are. Pokemon. Oh, it's from Pokemon. It's, it's, it's pretty, it is pretty spot on, to be honest. Yeah. Okay, cool. I'll take yeah, your word he, for that. Yeah, he really is. Okay. Um, okay, cool. Um, so, so in terms of that, that drive to be the personal best, does that mean that if he was given the options between kind of like restoring the house um, but achieving his own ambitions, which one of those would he choose? Probably whichever one sounds like you'd be most successful, like okay. at a glance. Oh, it's okay, like, yeah, oh yeah. you could do this and do this, or this and do this, and it'd be like, well, that sounds more great, so I'm going to go for that one. So, so impulsive in, in terms of the character. He's very impulsive. Like, he, he, he don't think about, don't think things through, he just goes in head first. If someone comes to him for help, he'll be like, yeah, sure. He'll be straight in there to help. Yeah, okay, cool, good. Yeah. I imagine would probably... But more for the prestige than it, than it is being the right thing. Would that yeah, be right insane? It's more, it's more like, oh, will you help me? It's like, well, people think it'll be better if I help you. So yes, of course I will. But I can imagine it'll get him into trouble a fair few times where he gets into fights that he can't win or it, it, yeah, yeah. it upsets the wrong people or the <clears> guard. I imagine probably probably know of him. Yeah, so I yeah. imagine he's probably got into one or two situations quite yeah, stupidly. Okay. Also, so I'm not planning on playing it where it's like I'm just going to be an idiot and just be like I cast fireball at the goal. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not that yeah. sort of like, like impulsive. Like it, he's he's smart, but it's just like I've got an opportunity to prove myself here. I'm I'm going to go for it. Yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, I'm thinking so, as well. When it, oh sorry. No, I was going to say so when the magisters say are there any majors present, he's like yeah 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 yeah, yeah me me yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can do this. He's passing fireballs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Say, Martin, gone. Um. Oh God, what was I going to say? <laughs> oh, um. Yes, when uh, when something requires uh, a family, uh, direct family business, or like someone being present. <clears throat> so he even uses his like brother's uh, kind of like temperament to his advantage there like he will attend himself if he's thinking the person wants a more formal um structured meeting but see if uh, the person say like mert the money launderer or a character like that would prefer a drinking buddy he just sends his brother instead because that's <laughs> that's likely to get a better response i like to imagine my character is a bit more down to earth than martin's as well yeah. like he, he he knows what the hard graphs like and he knows what it's like to be on the shit of the stick, yeah. basically. So I like to imagine he gets along with a lot more of the lower folk. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He knows how to act around nobles. He can be a noble, <laughs> but he can also go down to a tavern, have a couple of drinks, and enjoy himself. Exactly, yeah. Yep, yeah, okay, cool, got it. Um, okay, anything else that you think I should know? Um, not off the top of my head. Okay, so, so in terms of the house, then... Um, I can I can pull a, a like a name of a Waterdavian noble house out and flesh yeah, out flesh out on be one other thing. So again, because we haven't really thought of what the house name is, because we thought we'd ask you if you know of any like big name noble houses. Yeah, I can dig out um, the City of Splendors lists pretty much all the nobles in Waterdeep their houses mm. um, as that a hundred years ago plus. 
Um, but we can we can do that. Um, and if I flesh out based on what you're saying a, a little bit on um, kind of the background and the history of the house and the capabilities of the house um, and what what will have been lost when Daddy went missing and stuff. Does that work? Yeah. 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 yeah okay. Oh, um, do noble houses have favoured uh, deities? Um, yes, I would imagine so. Um, so they will all pay some form of respect to Siamorph, who originated kind of within Waterdeep and is, is essentially the goddess of being a noble, <laughs> you know, for, for one of a better, <laughs> right. better phrase. Um, uh, but Mr. is always a good shout. Yeah, I was thinking Mr. Azuth, Azuth, might be even, Azuth might be a better shout. Yeah. Actually. Oh, yeah. Hmm. I have no idea what I have them. Zeus is a god of wizards. Mystery is the goddess of the magical weave and the energies of magic. Yeah. I can see both from Fade. Well, if you if you worship a Zeus or, or kind of like pay reverence to a Zeus, you kind of pay reverence to Mystery. Because think of it as um, Mystery is the energy um, and a Zeus is the person that kind of like harnesses that energy. Specifically, Azuth for, is the knowledge for, for wizards. Yeah. Specifically, wizards. Mm. Azuth is got a. Oh, by the way, and I don't think you were there, Paul. Uh, did you know that Azuth, uh, Azuth's holy symbol um, is actually the somatic component for light? This one here. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Uh, <laughs> you know Sorry. Okay. Was a Paul, you. I thought I was being clever. <laughs> no, no, you were. You were. But you got a long way to go. Um, yeah okay cool okay excellent right so I think so that's that's an obvious link between between your characters Um, so we need to somehow join you to the kind of the rest of the the kind of group so um, Ben Rebecca Josh is there is there anything there that you kind of resonated with with your character in terms of, all oh, right, if they're doing that, then this is how it could be with how I envisage my character working. There was one thing that stood out. Um, even though our little pocket to mine in a bit of mind is a bit of a dodgy character, a bit of a criminal ex-criminal, but like on the side, he's kind of hired out to do some invest, almost like a private investigator, but usually on a slightly dodgy angle. So perhaps if you'd reported you were suspicious of his other family messing with your things to the guard and got nowhere with it, you might have turned to lesser means in the many yeah. ways to like kind of see what's going on in the back channels. Kind of. so you might have bumped into him that way. Yeah, so would you say that Dan's character would be more likely to bump into you than at a yeah. tavern or something? And... Yeah. Yeah, I definitely think I had time to admit. Maybe it's like yeah. that could be like it, why we're meeting in session one is where meeting is discussed this. Yeah. It, might, it, it would be more it'd be more Dan would ask <laughs> it'd be more like Dan would ask someone else who would then yeah. recommend yeah. that guy sat over there in the corner. Yeah. And then imagine get you what you want, we could thing. meet and that could be the first time or maybe met before and with specific yeah. details or something like that. Yeah. And that's well, how the we other, know each the other. The old the other idea I I had is because mine's sort of like a pre, uh, freelance problem solver at this point. Yeah. Now, although there are, in all matters arcane, Martin's character is the guy to go for. But if he's got a problem that is more um, magic related, yeah. Then if he would go to me, I would probably be like, "Well, I know a guy," and that would probably be how I would end up knowing a half orc rogue here. Yeah, I'd probably know you as well in the same. Mm. Reverse. That works quite well. Like- if, I, if, if I'm kind of investigating something, it's too magic related, and I'd be like, actually, I know a guy. Yeah. Kind mm. of, no, again, it was like, his brother's sister. Yeah, his exactly. Best, with my uncle's <laughs> maid, yeah. who also runs a place, who's also a private, who's a private investigator. Yeah. <laughs> who is also um, my, <laughs> my brother. But that's how I know. Yeah. <laughs> my, my I'm also a mate like that as well, but... Okay, so... so um, Mine. Oh, I was just going to say for Josh's character, maybe he actually saw something or has worked for the other family before or it's some, yeah. uh, some Labrador, seen yeah. something about, or knows something malicious about the other family and that's why we're like pulling you in as opposed yeah. to any other investigator. And it turns out that Josh, 
<laughs> Josh and I are actually just playing both houses off each other. <laughs> oh, yeah, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> that'd be, that'd be but now we've ruined it by saying that. <laughs> <laughs> But did you know? I am also Iago Montoya. Yeah. Um, okay, so so that, that that kind of works for me, though. Um, it has to be, I think, a little bit more, or it needs more to develop. The, the the arc need no, not so much more yeah. refined, but the arc needs to develop into something a little bit more solid than an employer employee relationship. Yeah. Um, so whether that's kind of like. Um, you know, ben, you had relations with the family historically, um, and you know maybe you were um, were involved kind of pre your fallout, and kind mm-hmm. of like you've taken the fixer role on. Kind of you know, they're helping you as you're helping them, and you bring Josh along with it. Uh, if it's just a pure employee-employee relationship, I kind of I would want to have something a little bit stronger than that. As time moves on, and we can do that within within game and such like. Um, I have an idea that would work because, um, because I've written down that like he likes to think he doesn't get involved in like politics or anything like that, but like his conscience always gets the better of him. You know, like if you if he walked by an alley and saw one of the wizard brothers getting mugged by a grunt, he, he'd be like, "I don't want to get involved," but and then like reluctantly like rescue them and then have the, said you know damn. Just be like, oh my god, thank you, and then be like, you know, like almost follow him around, like, oh, well, best mates, now you've saved me, kind of thing. And it's like, like it's nothing. Forget I'm about sorry, it, kind of. Gonna, very reluctant. Like, yeah. No place. Yeah. That yeah, kind like, of thing. Like, like, I'm like, no, no, I insist. Yeah. And then it's that's just... how they get talking about maybe a job after, but like he's relu- he, he reluctantly saves people just because his conscience kind of gets the yeah. better of him. Yeah. And then yeah. afterwards, he's always like, oh, just fuck it. Okay. Okay. So, 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 and and that might be how you kind of get you get drawn more in. So, Martin, Martin, you were going to kind of come in and say something, I think. Oh, um, I was thinking maybe another hook for Ben could be like he actually knew our father, even if he wasn't necessarily a member of the Harpers, and um, that's he's wanting to help out with that aspect, maybe. Maybe. Uh, yeah, like a friend of a family sort of thing. Like you knew us when we were younger. And like you want to help out with the issue, it was like, <laughs> yeah, you come back and you're like, Jesus, you guys have gotten tall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so Ben, uh, you were nay high. Everybody says that to Kenny. He's kind of like, you're taller, and I'm like, well, yeah, he's growing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so Ben, have you decided a human or elf? Mm, maybe half elf at this point. I've I've given thought on the actual character. But not in like the mechanics. I've not thought about the actual race, mm-hmm. uh, either fighter or or or, uh, or bard. Um, one of the two. Um, so he and a childhood friend joined the Harpers around the same time. Uh, but within the organisation, I expect they probably had rather different paths. Who's this? Sorry. Uh, uh, well, you said about a rival character. Oh, right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, rival. yeah. So, potential rival. Uh, during an infiltration mission involving a very small band of Harpers, uh, when that went awry, uh, my character was the only one caught, captured, and either imprisoned or enslaved for a large amount of time. I don't know if you want to roll the dice on how long that is. Oh, um, let me get my D100 out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I kind of figured, well, the longer it is, then probably elf. Um, <laughs> You're in prison. <laughs> You're in prison. Yeah. 12,000 yeah. years ago. <laughs> That's one hell of a walking so, out of the uh, cinema and it's still day. <laughs> I'm excited for you, Ben. Uh, he somehow, somehow become drow while he's in there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you uh, so put my dice roll, you were imprisoned for nine years, if you can see that. That works for me. Um, so, there had been a stage prison break, um, but in, during that time in which he was in imprisoned, there was no word of uh, a break or, or Harper's saving. There wasn't any word at all from them. Not even as much as uh, uh, 
as a word. It was almost as if they very much cut him off or out. Yeah. Uh, after staging uh, a breakup, he finds himself very much uh, a freelance problem solver in Waterdeep, no less. Uh, he's very, very bitter and resents the Harpers uh, tremendously, uh, with no no trust for them at all. Um, should the Harpers approach him about getting this gold, his first thought is tends to be like one: what is it for? In what's in it for me? But very super close second is what the fuck. Is in it for you? Mm hmm. Okay. You okay. just mentioned that your character's probably in prison. Is this a good discipline in war? Uh, not been imprisoned in war, Steve, no. Because I was going to say, I, I, I've written down from mine, like, my character's probably been in and out occasionally, prison, like, short term, like, mm -hmm. for petty things. That could be a way. You know, oh, I know a guy, because oh, I spent a couple of years in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, well, look, maybe, maybe you did the whole kind of like um, Batman Beyond. Yeah. Where you, you escaped the Soviet Gulag <laughs> together and then went off to train with some Buddhists or something. I, I can't quite remember the film, but that's that's all. Right. So that, that that might be where you kind of forged the link. You know, that that feels like a reasonable place. And then kind of like Ben, if you kind of like knew the dad or the family or what have you, you kind of like you know return through to Waterdeep. Um, it's one of the places you call because you've had some patronage before, you find out what's happened, you kind of like, right, we can use the skills, you know, Josh, you, you, you're kind of on the side with it. That kind of creates a, a, a good base, I think, to, to kind of work from, um, to be perfectly honest. Um, and then, then you guys can be kind of you know, further in some investigation into the rivals as, as much as anything else, as well as following your own paths. What do we reckon? Well, with mine, he'd be very reluctant to pick up the Harper badge again. Um, one thing Martin actually mentioned at the start of this session, which I hadn't considered, was Kelvin, Kelvin Blackstaff's um, offshoot organisation from the Harpers. Oh, I can't remember what they're called. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But from my, from my understanding, that they kind of, I don't know if they went underground or just fucking vanished. When um, when Calvin died, oh, I think I that they vanished. The name of them, I th um, I can't either, but I'll be able to find it out within you know, not very long. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, Calvin still resides as a sentient entity in the Blackstaff staff. Um, <laughs> what it's worth. No, that's not known in character, by the way. Um, uh, okay. I so, so know what book that's from? <laughs> I can't remember. Um, Are they called the Silver Stars, or am I getting that wrong? They may well be. I can't remember. Um, so, so Ben, can we can we just can we just talk about the um, the elephant in the room, um, the Muma kill in the room, um, fight or a bard? Which one do you really want to do? Ah, uh. yeah. <laughs> Probably bard. Okay, so so what so what's stopping you from just saying I'm I'm a bard? Um, the not much ta not much of a tank. Okay, I I don't think that's <laughs> I don't think that's the most. That's my previous issue. Yeah, I don't think that's the I most sensible. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'd say definitely go play what you want to play, not yeah, yeah. party needs. Because the slower Paul said earlier, if you don't enjoy playing as a player, yeah, yeah. lay that line, you're gonna be like. I just swap characters. I don't. I'm not enjoying this. Yeah, it's you're the you're... Abbot. You have like five characters. You don't get stuck with them, and you probably just end up playing the Abbot or Diego. <laughs> mm. You you well, res a... you resent it. Bards are pretty tough it anyway, so I don't think you have to worry about time. Mm. Yeah. Moonstars. They're called Moonstars. Oh. Yeah. Okay. I've I've just posted the link below. Cool. Yep. Okay. Um. Just mine. Um. So so to Bard then, yeah. Yes, please. Okay, cool. Uh, uh, yeah, I just wanted to get, uh, get that resolved because I think my my view was that you wanted to play a bard, but you felt the pressure mm. to play uh, a fighter, which kind of brings us across to yeah. um, to Rebecca, really. Um, Forge clerics, as as kind of mine said, can be quite tanky. Mm. Um, so, uh, have you had any? Pastors <laughs> too. Yeah. 
Um, so have you had any um, any thoughts on your character, Rebecca, in terms of how it could link into this, this group that we're starting to form now? Type faster. <laughs> <laughs> so to be a chef. Or, or you just mistype chief. <laughs> chef, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, head chef. Working up recipes for the restaurant chain. <laughs> what are you role playing, boys? Are role playing, role playing a uh, hungry horse? D and D. Yeah, or just a family chef. Kind of like Steven Seagal in. Um, Not even the head chef. The sous chef. The sous chef. Have you just been Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, so, so she has a, a stake in the in, in like the household itself. A stake in the household, boom tish. <laughs> and if she's been with us for a long time, then I guess there would be maybe be some attachment. Like uh, she views us as her own kids, almost. Yeah, grand, fair, gr- Rebecca. Granny dwarf kind of like hitches up her skirts and she's like, right then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that 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 works for me. I like that. Yeah, okay. The, the dwarf Mary Poppins and all. <laughs> yeah. Or um, <laughs> a spoonful of granite. The um. Go down. <laughs> um, I don't know what the character's name is from um, uh, Gone with the Wind. Um. Okay, I'm just trying to, trying to, trying to, not be completely, uh, yeah, okay, I'm not, I'm not going to get into that, um, but yeah, okay, I get, I think we get the, um, Dwarf and Mary Poppins in my aesthetic, <laughs> <laughs> keeping the boys in order, yeah, I like it, yeah, 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 kind of like, um, almost like a Granny Weatherax, kind of like style mm. takes no crap from anyone um, uh, Granny Weatherwax <laughs> from Terry Pratchett's Discworld oh I've never read Discworld you've never read Discworld I'm surprised, I'm surprised I've not either I should have done that oh, you're same out. I've read one or two but I've never read the whole thing Oh, by the way, Ben, you seen anything you like in that link, then? Sorry? You seen anything you like in that link for the... Um, the I can't, um... I'm, I'm scared to open it right now, because uh, the reason my la- I ended up dropping from the chat um, is because my screen, my computer's currently doing the screen, blue screen of death. Oh. So it, it seems to be only when I use the internet on this laptop, so I will be using a different laptop when it comes to playing on Roll20. Um... Yeah. All uh, Fantasy Grounds. Other the VTTs are yeah. also available. Yeah, yeah. So. I have all of the um, Pratchett novels. I can't believe you guys haven't read them. I've got a lot. I've got a lot. Like Josh said, probably. I probably, I probably should have, but then I started reading the Driz books, and then a bunch of other Forgotten Realms books. So, uh, I don't if know. you want, I can lend you the uh, first book, The Flow of Magic. You want well, I'm, current, I'm currently in the middle of a series at the moment. I mean, I'm in no rush to get it back. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, also, by the way, Ben, I read those two um, books that you gave to me, so whenever we see each other next, remind me to bring those. Um, okay, so Rebecca, yeah, that, that I think we've I think we've got that. So kind of like Mary Poppins, kind of been around the um, the block a few times, not afraid to um, to give people a clip around the ear when they're being a bit silly, um, and a, a forge cleric. Which probably makes you the tank of the group, actually. <laughs> which isn't, <laughs> isn't a bad thing. Um, have you thought about a deity that you'd wear? Yeah, yeah. Think about the... Uh, have you thought about a deity that you'd worship? Uh, I mean, Moradin is obvious, but there is a... There is a dwarven... There is a dwarven... Yeah, possibly... Is there is there one of the, is there like a dwarven deity of the clans or like one that's more focused on family than Moradin is? His wife. Moradin would seem like Oti. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, let's have a look at the Soul Coast Adventurers Guide. Oh, I'm looking at um, yeah, the human there's dirties. more gods in there. <laughs> um, Dawn also, Pantin, on, the, being able to go for the I also really like the idea that I learned my craft at the uh, the Bard College in Silvery Moon. I just think that's a nice little touch. Yeah, okay. So, Verona True Silver is the uh, revered mother, the mother goddess, matron of home and hearth, mother of safety, truth, and home. She is a um, bride of Moradin and Dracula. Um, but nobody's quite <laughs> sure how that crossover happened. Verona. Fanfic has gone too far again. Yeah, I know. What's that then? My slash fic. With yeah. Verona True Silver and Dracula. It's available at www.badwriting.com forward slash what the fuck. Speaking of fan fiction, did any of you guys watch up that video I put up? Um, uh, fan friction? No. no. And I don't yeah. want to. I really yeah, don't want to. I know you didn't because you guys would have commented that um, uh, uh, Matt Mercer's in a gay orgy at the end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, in that case, I think I might watch it. <laughs> no reason. Okay, but but we we can sort we can sort that stuff out. Okay, so so let's just let's just cycle back around then to um to Ben. Um. So 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 other than what we've kind of covered, Ben, a bard, trained at um Silvery Moon, some relationship to the to the head of the household from um. Martin and Dan's character. What do we know about your character? Personality. He's or... done time. Done time. Yeah. Okay. So is he is he a kind of like a embittered personality all the time, or oh, oh, have you have you given that any um, kind of consideration? Think... Well, since since not as much, but certainly since considering, um, the working as more of a freelancer. Is probably brings him a lot more joy, or as much joy as he's likely to get in the Forgotten Realms. Um, but sort of any involvement with the Harpers is like walls up. But that could very well be something that gets gradually broken down. Okay. Ooh, what, what about your former party members? Have you managed to catch up to them, or have they evaded you thus far? Um. At this point, he doesn't want anything to do with them. Oh, okay. Um, his view is that the Harpers have washed their hands of him. So okay. that could that could lead to some very interesting um, altercations. Yeah. Okay. RP. You couldn't have. So I think um, Paul's looking for rivals. So like maybe some mm. like most of them are still like on your side and friendly. If you were to encounter them them and feel bad about what happened but maybe you got caught because one of the members like botched the job on purpose or something well would yeah, you maybe. be okay with that yeah I, I completely would be because I, th I think uh, one thing that would like I don't know be a a spark in the back of his head would be that was someone um, working for the wrong side the Zentarum maybe Okay, yeah, so, so just touching on that then, um, have you given thought to who, you, you know, what the infiltration mission was about and all that kind of stuff, and do you want to do that, or do you want me to do that, or, or how do you want to do that? Uh, um, I, I'm happy to discuss it over a drink. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah. You're like, yes, free drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll meet you for a green tea at 7am. Um, <laughs> In town, then. Not a problem. Okay, cool. Yep, let's do that. Um, and and kind of... Um, I want to just come back to that question I asked around the personality kind of style. It, 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 does, he, does he wear this as a chip on his shoulder, or is it just this thing that happened to him that is, is like, specifically bitter about that, but jogging on with the rest of his stuff? That bit I've been kind of unsure, because I think if it was kind of like bitter about it the entire time would give him a very dirty Harry kind of persona mm -hmm. which is not necessarily a bad thing but I don't want to be limited to just that 
Like if I could start that way and grow in, grow out of it as as kind of like time moves yeah. on. Yeah, I think certainly, like I said before, if like any involvement with the Harpers at an early stage, that mentality would probably still be quite red hot. Mm -hmm. If you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, have you thought about a college, um, as in the um, the type of bard that you think you might want to become? Um, thought about the ones that I definitely don't want to be, or certainly would not fit the, ca the yep. character. So glamour would be a no. Um, I swords, like glamour bards. Maybe bond. law, but I don't. I don't know if if this character would be that way. Inclined, you know. Um, yeah. If you want to go dark, what about whispers? Maybe. That's not that's worth considering. I mean, law was initially my thought, but I, I don't know. Stealing people's shadows and gaining information. <laughs> that is that that is pretty cool. I always quite that like. I don't know. Valor. Uh... Um, I'll I'll have a, a a thought on it. I think on it tonight, and I'll get back to you on that. Yeah. yeah okay. Cool. That's good. Yep. Okay. Um. Okay. So, uh, Josh, sorry. Um, do you want to talk us through your character then? Yeah. So, uh, half orc rogue seems an odd choice, I suppose. But it's a cat. I don't kind of see him as an out and out freak. He doesn't see himself as that. Mm -hmm. He isn't that crazy. And like he'd probably refuse to join it because he, he kind of just does it to get by rather than be a refined thing in many ways. Even though he's good at it. I mean, he's like a one, but I mean, he's good at it. But... Yeah. Um, so he's a bit more of a brawler in many ways, like, but, but he's quite a quiet character in some aspects. I kind of, I don't kind of visualise him very Strider from Fellowship of the Ring. Aragorn, you know, when he's sat in the corner of the inn, and they're like, oh, some, you know, and the barman's like, oh, some call him Strider, the wild man. You know, like, he's a bit weird, mm -hmm. almost. So he's kind of like quiet figure in the periphery. It's because he's protecting the Breelands and Hobbiton from the yeah. um, forces of evil out in area door. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. just saying. Yeah. But so, so, like, in a similar way, like, he wouldn't take credit for some stuff. He kind of does things often reluctantly, but then he's not one to kind of, like, want the limelight in many ways. So, Save the wizard, then tells him to fuck off. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I think, yeah, he's definitely, probably, like, he's definitely in the criminal underworld. He doesn't, would have considered himself a proper crook, you know, like, he's not evil, he's definitely not evil. Um, but he'll, he'll just do what he has to to get by in many aspects. Uh, I'd say like people often maybe hire him as guides or bodyguard getting you know, if like rough nobles wanted to go for a rough area and they just wanted someone mm -hmm. as a presence or more guide yeah, yeah. through. Um Yeah, you've got intimidate just being a half yeah. don't you? Yeah. <laughs> um he's not big as half ox to go, but like he's just got that kind of yeah, he he's got a, you know, a bit of a presence. Um but uh, yeah, he kind of, he does, I'd say like people would hire him out for that kind of thing, but they'd also hire him out because he's obviously quite quick and sharp, and he's quite a good eye for detail, so like quite often, like almost as like a private investigator, but it'd usually be for the more suspect things they'd hire him out, you know, so they'd ask him to scout out something, probably, you know, his clients are probably, you want it for ill will, but... He kind of just does it for the call, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if he's quite good at it. So if you don't really want to go to the watch because it's the fenced goods that have been stolen, and you kind of are going to get in shit, you'd come to the to this guy and be like, "Look, go find, go yeah. sort." Um, and yeah. maybe if you're kind of like what a slightly more sinister A team. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. if the it's force, advanced. yeah, if the normal forces can't quite help you out, then you can call the A team. Bam, 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 bam. Um, so you you call this guy in. Yeah, 
yeah, I mean, it's, uh, B is probably like, you know, on the best of days when everybody else is out of the races. Normally, it's, <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's hexadecimal is like the FF team. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay, that's cool. So then. I'd say he's definitely, because of like just his lifestyle, he's definitely been in and out of prison a few times for petty, small things. Mm-hmm. It's not like he, he's not bitter about it. It'd, it'd be very the fair dues kind of, I got yeah, caught, I'll, be, yeah, I'll yeah. just sit. And I'll do my time. So, you know, you like short term things. So maybe that's how he bumped his it's, friend's character. Yeah, it's in you know, risk. He'll be in there six months later. Oh, you're back again, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, what have you put this time? Yeah, what have you done this time? Well, I can't do this, fair enough. So, so in Waterdeep, have you been in prison in Waterdeep? Yeah, I'd say once or twice. And definitely in some other cities as well. But not never for like long periods of time. Yeah, yeah. never for okay. anything egregious. No, nothing, nothing like serious. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, I definitely think he's sometimes a bit of a drunk. Maybe <laughs> like, he's really... kind of got two sides to him. He you doesn't could... really have a home. He just kind of wanders. Um. <laughs> so kind of like the A team crossed with the list hobo. <laughs> with a bottle of whiskey and a brown paper bag. Yeah. Okay. It's Charlie Chaplin. Right. Yeah. When you said um, people might know him as sometimes a bit of a drunk, I was just thinking, well, people say that about me. Yeah. <laughs> um, an Inquisitor class, yeah? Yeah, Inquisitor. Yeah. Well, once it gets to level three. Yeah, yeah. Um, just because I think he definitely thinks he's sharp and he's, he's, he's not low on confidence in that aspect like he's quite quiet but like I'd say he definitely thinks if he walked into a room he's going to notice things other people won't he's definitely confident in his own abilities in that way um, but, but I think there's definitely going to be something under the surface that bugs him and most people just assume he's a half off it's the voice of grunch in his head distracted whatever. but there's definitely going to be something like an undertone that, like not that he's a damaged person but it's definitely something that bothers him yeah okay something okay like always under the surface which i won't i might message you about that that's like his conscience. yeah yeah okay cool his conscience yeah well that's what i think in quite a, in many ways a Geralt of rivia character who doesn't who definitely doesn't think oh, i'm not going to get involved in politics i'm not going to get involved and then when he's there he does get involved because he's just like so involved. can't not get involved josh have you ever watched castlevania no. The car oh that cartoon is fantastic. Yes, because um see the bit where you're talking about someone being mugged, it was like straight out of one of the scenes in um I think it's like the second or third episode. Yeah. It's like uh this old man's getting mugged by these two uh, priests and he's yeah. like he he's like, leave it alone, just walk on and he keeps walking and then he hears it getting like more violent and he goes and yeah, then goes exactly back that. And, exactly and then that. goes back and kicks the shit out of the people. Yeah, that's and gets exactly in a lot how I of trouble it. for it as well. Yeah, that's exactly how I imagine it. Yeah, you should watch Castlevania then, because like I um, it's, a, it's such what? a fantastic cartoon. It's because if D and D was done like in a cartoon, character. that's how it should be done. Yeah. yeah, Trevor is your character, like, and he's even kind of like roguey in the way he does combat as well. Yeah. Also, so there's a great master, scene. There's a great scene in the end where they talk about goat fucking. <laughs> Which is YouTube goat fucking. Um, not Castlevania goat fucking, just goat fucking. Um, and um, when Emily chucks you out, there's no space here. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Do it from a work computer because I'm sure that, you know. Oh, yeah, they love that in the government. It definitely, definitely won't get picked up by GCHQ. Um <laughs> Oh, that sounds like Andy just came home. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, okay, cool. Um, right, I think that's kind of what I wanted to cover by and large. Actually, is there any any? Okay, so so before we before we go into a general Q and A from you guys, um, so Martin, what's your character's name? So I actually I don't know how I ended up on this, but I was googling names one night and I went for Anglo-Saxon Anglo-Saxon names mm-hmm. and uh, Ethelred and Reddy. Which I thought was quite. I cool. went for Saxon end as well. Really? Yeah. So how how are you spelling that? A L D. Yep. R E D. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. 
Um, Dan. Uh, I went with Gilbert. Who, sorry? Gilbert. Gilbert. Okay. With the, uh, with the English names of Xanathar's and then I just sort of stuck out to me as, you know what, sound like a Gilbert. Okay, hmm. Ben? I have not yet come up with a name. Um, okay. Probably going to be an elven name though, be it either half elf or... Um, again, I will get back to you on that. Yeah, okay, no worries. Josh? Thing. Um, I'm not sure, but I went with Fenrir, as in F E N R I R, the legendary wolf of Viking lore. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, I had like, maybe like he had the nickname or something, because he's quite quick and sharp. And, and Rebecca. Grandma Poppins. <laughs> Granny Poppins. Grandpop. The big G. The G unit. There <laughs> this is shit radio and shit video, I have to say. <laughs> there isn't a media where waiting for somebody to type a role playing character name into a chat box isn't a bit poor. <laughs> particularly since it doesn't say ah oh, no now he's typing <laughs> it's just IDK it's IDK it says Vera Nam Pops on mine <laughs> <laughs> I think I uh, I think my, my mine doesn't scroll down oh yeah Yeah, Vera Nan Pops. Okay, Vera Nan Pops. Okay, so that's how many, cool. How many rivals have we got lined up? We've got one Noble House and one, one ex Harper Agent. Yeah, that's, that's good. Well, agent. Might be a double agent or may just still be in the Harpers. We don't know. Mm. Yeah, that, that works for me. Okay, uh, before we do the Q&A, um, let's just take a five minute break because Andy's just got back and I just want to go and check in on him and I also just want to check on, um, okay, just check it's okay, so I'll just take five. Yeah, mm -hmm. Cheers. Oh, right. similar name. Uh, it's about, is it uh, the thing about um, like New Zealand vampires living together as mates? I've seen that, it's hilarious. Hmm. But back on the surface at Castlevania, I think if if they did if there was a yeah, I think I don't know which game it's based on, but to me, it's exactly how I would imagine Curse of Strath. Did you say Castlevania TV show? Film. Castlevania is like is it four episodes? It's just four episodes. Yeah, it's basically the length of a movie. Yeah, it's really good. What's it on Netflix? Yeah. Yeah, I recommend it. Okay, yeah, yeah. I think we're core it now, aren't we? Mm. Is it nine back? <laughs> um, so, any questions? So, Q and A, guys. You can ask me anything you like about anything, and I'll answer um, how I choose. Frankly, <laughs> maybe it'll be honest. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to say. So, see if we get the fly spell. We're still not allowed to. Fly in Waterdeep till we get a flight license, yeah? Um, yeah. That's, that's a thing, isn't it? Yeah. Mm. You need yeah, a yeah, license. Yeah, don't want unlicensed flying. Yeah. I once played in a campaign oh. where a leprechaun got in, incarcerated because they were un, uh, flying without a license in Waterdeep. <laughs> <laughs> that was not the reaction oh, of the player. Okay. <laughs> he did not laugh about that at all. Also, I think if, if uh, anyone were to actually get their hands on a griffin, I think I, myself, not my character, will fucking kill the griffin. <laughs> <laughs> He's He had a bad experience with griffins in Storm King's Thunder. He has a little experience with griffins. 
Yeah, so based on the final fight, the Ancient Blue Dragon's fight uses Lightning Breath, which murdered Rebecca's Griffin. In the vaporized, vaporized it. It's, if it's it had vaporized. been vaporized, it could have been brought back much easier, but Dan. Dan, you, yeah. Dan used it the word rolled, vaporized. You all just want to get saved from That thing got vaporized. <laughs> so yeah, so based on the previous room, I'd give him a spell scroll of true resurrection. With the idea to resurrect a very important plot in PC. Uh, ben was basically blackmailed into reviving Rebecca's grip, and I was not happy about it. <laughs> not happy about it in the slightest. But I roleplayed it so well. Yeah, he basically <laughs> raised for it live at that point. And I was like, well, but these my grip is But what's it worth to you? Is it worth a spell scroll? <laughs> Before we get too uh, um, off topic, well, what's, it, what's it worth to you? Well, a scroll of pre resurrection should, should do it. <laughs> Before we get too off topic, uh, I guess one other thing I want to ask was just uh, to make the stealth mechanics clear, uh, especially for um, Josh's character, like um, being he heavily obscured and being behind walls and stuff. Um, you're functionally invisible, so does that give advantage, or will you even have him roll, or like, you know, different factors and stuff? How are you gonna play that? Um. So first things, uh, I think that's important is you can't just stealth in combat. You have to kind of like break line of sight in some way. Um, it, that'll only matter to be up to third level, I think. Because then once I get there, I get Inquisitor thing. And I can use, in the back, it's, it's referred to a sneak attack by like sizing them up. Yeah, yeah you don't have to have an, so you don't have to have an I advantage. I really call it sneak attack. So then, you know, you get sneak attack on them. Yeah, yeah. After, it costs you a bonus action. Yeah. And get sneak attack. Um, yeah, but I will, I will require rolls for stealth, even if you're like behind a wall, because you could, you know, make a lot of noise as much as anything yeah. else. Um, yeah. And I think, um, I, in terms of, I think it, it it comes into play a lot when if you're probably in the um, in the um, under mountain section because you could um, be kind of scouting ahead of the party and such like mm -hmm. and I think there's a difficulty there if you're scouting ahead of the party and you <laughs> fail a stealth roll you, you kind of going to get mullerized um, so mm -hmm. I think a failure of a stealth roll there you become aware that you're kind of like not being as stealthy as possible in that scouting situation so you might kind of like okay if I carry on I may get spotted so I think I'm going to roll it in that way rather than yeah. you kind of suddenly boom you, know, you manage to stealth your way into the middle of the orc encampment, a la Shadow over Mordor, and then you break your, your stealth, and you're like, shit. <laughs> you know? um, so it'll be like, right, okay, I, I, I now need to be aware that if I go much further, then I could get spotted kind of thing. Um, um, and then it's kind of a question of, kind of, can you find a situation or, or an argument to say, oh, I should be able to stealth here? Um, I think your character's possibly more urban orientated, so I, I'd kind of be happy to say, you know, if it's thick mog, thick mog, I don't know whether it's thick fog in an urban setting, then you know, you'd be lightly obscured, so you could use some equivalent of Mask Very of the dumb. Wild to kind of like be able to, um, Very dumb cat. yeah, to be able to kind of like stealth in that in that regard. Um, but basically, the key things for me are always one that need to roll because it's always opposed by perception check. Um, more often than not, it might be a passive perception DC, or it could be an active perception DC, depending upon the the situation. Um, and you need to break line of sight if you're going to kind of stealth. Yeah, um, it's not really a strongly stealth base. Really. No, I don't. Yeah, it's more a skill base rather than a strength. Uh, yeah. Stealth base, you can Illusions will be adjudicated, bonus. kind of like as per my mostly off-topic article, um, which you can kind of just get to and have a little look at. Um, anything else, guys? Um, one thing I was kind of wanting to do was um, minor illusion uh, a barrel and then sneak up behind it. Is that that's totally cool? Is it? Yeah, if somebody fires at you and you using the barrel as cover, it's going to go straight through the barrel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so so I don't quite know. I have to give some thought how to how to think about that. But I guess if they miss because of the AC bonus that you get from it being cover, then it's gone straight through and hit you. <laughs> Mind illusion three barrels and high gain one of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, yeah, so you could you could do that, you could create the barrel, you could hide behind it. 
if you if you you know if it would ordinarily give you half cover for instance it's not because it's not actually there and the physical bolt or arrow will pass straight through it irrespective of whether the person believes it's real or not yeah but i was thinking more like um <clears throat> approaching a doorway like you make a barrel and then like you sneak up behind it yeah, depends. yeah, but but uh, yeah, and a lot. And a lot of depends upon you know if this guy is like, hold on a fucking minute, where the hell's that barrel come from? I've lived here twenty yeah. years and there's never <laughs> been a barrel. It still takes him an action to do an investigation roll to check. So so mm. yeah, at that point, it's still taking some action economy out of the uh, the whole thing. And Dan can make it stink as well to make it much more believable. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. stinky barrel. Going an illusion wizard, so I get to make two elements. Yeah, cast. I am. Um, or, I, or I could it, just make a barrel start rolling down the hill at them. Yeah, 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 yeah. It sounds like you guys have fantastic nights out in Waterdeep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anything else, guys? <laughs> yeah. So we can't like be told up walking down the city street. Uh, you can be. There's no laws that prohibit the wearing of armor or weapons. But if you saw a guy, well, I assume you're a bandit. Yeah, if, if, yeah. If 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 you saw a guy kind of walking down Fargate, carrying, you know, dressed a like he was going to a fight, you'd be like, "Well, mm-hmm. the guy's asking for a fight, isn't he?" Yeah. Yeah, so 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 the police are going to be like, "Okay, fine. You're saying he jumped you, but what are you doing with a the knife then?" Yeah. So, so, and and people will look at your scans. It'll be like, oh, hold on a minute, you know, why are you doing that? So, so a noble might might get away with it for it being a really kind of you know, fantastic ceremonial weapon or what have you. Um, it's a you know, fashionable race. Should have been a monk. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd say some 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 priests, particularly on like high days. Um, if you're kind of like I'm um, heading off to. To train down at the Temple of Tempus, um, and you kind of like maybe you have your weapon not openly at your side, but kind of like you know you carrying it clearly, kind of you know like how you have a shotgun and it'd be in a case, that kind of thing. You know wouldn't really kind of get much much stares. But if you're if you're tromping around, kind of like um, the market dressed in full plate, fully armed, people are going to be like, well, why, why, mate? You know it's not necessary. Because it's a police area, it's a br- broadly peaceful area. If you're heading down to the sort of kind of like docks, you probably you know, want to go with some level of with armed, and you may decide that it's better to go armed and armoured and have that problem than it is to <laughs> have the problem of getting jumped in a in a less insalubrious area with fuck all. You know, taking a knife to a gunfight is better than taking like you know a load of pansies. <laughs> at least you've got a knife um, what was I going to say the, one of the laws is brandishing a weapon so this is like actually unsheathing it is basically pulling out on somebody and threatening it. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah yeah dueling is completely illegal has been for a long while Okay. Um, if no one else is going to speak, I feel like I'm doing all the questions. <laughs> um, that would be because you are. Wondering... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does, does nobody else have any questions? Yeah, that's a few. Uh, go ahead then. Did you want rivals from all of us? Or... No, I'm, I'm quite happy if, if, if yeah, we've, got, we've got a couple of rivals there, fairly strong. Rivals that ebb and flow as we go through the campaign, through 1 through 20, I imagine. I've got maybe one or two good character ideas, but I probably want to keep them hidden. Like, so should I just message you? Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just, just, um, yeah, touch me up, um, privately, so to speak. (laughs) (laughs) Just, just saying, just, just putting it out there. Sorry, Josh. Mine, you Sorry. you're gonna you're gonna touch me up as well, yeah. <laughs> um, I was just wondering, um, more guidance on the uh, down, downtime activities, um, you were saying, and stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, 
So the way that I kind of see this is that um, we'll start off with the kind of like with the session in a couple of weeks' time. We'll in between that we'll do a bit of um, kind of like turn and frown between me and individual groups of characters or individual characters to go and get the setup right. That's a, a pretty kind of like mission session. Um, at the end of that, you kind of get. I think it's at the end of that you get kind of rewarded with the property. And at that point, then it's like, okay, what do you want to do with this thing? And then we'll we'll play some downtime. So we might say, right, okay, guys, you know, um, it'll be a few weeks until the next in a few weeks game time until the next kind of like session happens or the events of the next session happen what do you want to do and you can roll down time you can do what have you, you can you just describe that kind of stuff we'll probably deal with it either at the end or the start of the session and it'll be proactive based upon what you guys want to do and don't feel limited to the downtime actions within Xenthos or the PHP or what have you if you say right I want to you know, we've just we've just come into some coin. I want to spend it to kind of you know grease the palms of some of the city watch to see what I find out about you know the rivals or what have you. Then we can kind of work that through. Okay. But it'll be about what you guys want to do and 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 kind of like by and large, kind of what I'll what I'll the the restriction I'll put on it is I would very much want you to stay within water deep. So if you're kind of mm. saying, hey, let's go over to um, Cormia or wherever, I'm going to be like, mm, oh. can we maybe not? Because <laughs> <So>, <laughs> it, it's an urban <laughs> adventure set within the cities of Waterdeep. Okay, so what I'll be doing in between times is also just doing a bit more kind of like um, scene setting, some, probably some videos that I'll stick on to... Mm. Um, to YouTube and such like, just kind of saying, okay, guys, here is a little bit more information now that I know what's relevant to your to your kind of characters, um, and it would be helpful. And I'll choose by probably the end of this week which VTT I'll use, so Fantasy Grounds or Roll Twenty, um, and then we'll create the characters in that. I'll set up a campaign on D and D Beyond as well. Um, if so, if you guys want to kind of create your characters in D and D Beyond, which I think is fantastic, by the way, um, then you can do that as well. I don't think you can export from D and D Beyond into one of the VTTs. I'm not quite sure, but I haven't seen that particularly. <clears throat> uh, from having used both of them before, I think Fantasy Grounds is the nice nicer of the two. Um, uh, roll 20, um, it's not as nice to use, but it's, it serves its purpose. Yeah, I think, um, I think that roll 20 has a smaller upfront cost and also has built in kind of like video chat and voice chat. Yeah. Whereas Fantasy Grounds. I've I've never used it though. Yeah, yeah. Fantasy Grounds has um, has more of an upfront cost, but the modules to buy are cheaper, um, and it looks like a more feature-rich program. If I'm honest. Also, bonus for Fantasy Grounds, if you have the premium, the rest of us don't need to buy anything. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right. You and basically use all your content. Yeah, that's what Rebecca's asking right now. <laughs> that's a bit interesting. How much are they beyond? Oh, um, so whichever one of those options, I think it's free to you guys. Essentially, um, they both come off of a. Um, whomever's running the game needs to kind of either have subscription, or has to have a um, has to have bought the appropriate license with Fantasy Grounds. Um, but the Fantasy Grounds Ultimate. You can buy a subscription with Fantasy Grounds, and both of them, I think, are like ten dollars a month. With you can buy the full license for one hundred and fifty dollars with Fantasy Grounds, and then you have to buy like the content, so like the D and D fifth edition books, and they're like forty dollars for Roll Twenty, but they're like twenty dollars for Fantasy Grounds. Um, and I think Fantasy Grounds was supported for longer. But if we do Fantasy Grounds, then I'll need to find a way to get video chat to work. Um, with it while sharing screen right. to record so I don't quite know how I'm going to play that but I'll, I'll have a look at it okay. 
Um, right then. Would, would, would we only be using, like, Fancy Grounds or Roll20 when necessary, or would we be keeping it, like, Theatre of the Mind, or...? Um, I suspect Under Mountain benefits from a map. Okay. I think um, Dragon Heist less so. Um, okay. And Dragon Heist can probably be played full theatre of the mind. There are probably some bits of it that benefit from a map, actually. Um, but I, th I, I would imagine Under Mountain will benefit massively from a map. Yeah. You know, just by the nature of the dungeon. Mm -hmm. Bloody big dungeon. Yeah, yeah. Also, um, I think it helps with the mass and the keeping of the characters kind of like um, throughout because there'll be a lot more rolling than than in in an intrigue game, whichever way we play it. Yeah, it just takes care of some of the admin. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Uh, well, I guess another one we're going south. See if I make a noise, and I'm invisible around the corner. Is is invisibility in this game like kind of like the predator cloak, or is it like pure invisibility? Uh, invisibility gives you what, like plus ten to stealth rolls, plus twenty to stealth rolls, or something? Does it not give you advantage? I can't remember. Well, whatever the spell invisibility gives you is exactly what how it works. I thought the spell invisibility like literally just makes you invisible. Right, so it's it's more That's like all. a predator cloak because if they look enough, they can see you. Let me read um, it. No, I thought only people with special abilities would be able to see through it. Uh, Line sight will allow you to see through it. Search comes invisible until the spell ends. Anything tells you when a can is invisible. It tells the person. The spell ends for target attacks or cast a spell. So, that sounds to me like you're just invisible. As the 13th level uh, Inquisitive Rogue, I'd be able to see you. <laughs> Unless, unless two pick and unless it's two pick in the dark, in which case you cannot see me. <laughs> so no, I'll give you just... the invisible condition. Da, 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 da. I mean, it's not going to be possible till second level, but mm. uh, no, sorry, till third level, because that's when I get my second level spells. Mm. Yeah. If I make it that far, I don't want to jinx it. Okay, so for the purpose of hiding, you're heavily obscured. Um, impossible to see without the aid of magic or special sense. Attack rolls against a creature have disadvantage, and the creature's attack rolls have advantage. So you're making a stealth roll. Mm. Don't know what does heavily obscured gives you? DMG. I think uh, is it 183 gives you um, total obscure. Or something like that. This is what? Sorry. Hold on, I'll see if I can find it. I was looking up this earlier because fog kind of does a similar thing. Yeah, like it completely yeah. Completely breaks line of sight. Yeah. I forgot it's not. They're not in the DMG, are they? They're in. Heavily obscured. Um. Uh. It says blocks vision entirely. So I would be asking for a, for a self roll, but I'd probably give you advantage on it. That would make sense. <coughs> Unless you were kind of like, you know, walking across kind of like something that. Sand. <laughs> well, sa sand. Glass. Yeah, yeah, some or, or yes, or some. Or you're walking across something that like you know, made lots of noise. So if you're walking across the the keys of a piano, being stealthed, <laughs> you know, being invisible, it's kind of like neither here nor there. You know, your ability to do that in a stealthy, dexterous way is more important. So yeah, so it's a conditional thing. But yeah, assume all things being equal, you're kind of getting some form of advantage on the stealth roll. Um, and certainly, if I would rule that the um, the opposing, you know, whom yourself is from, is by and large relying on their perception. Then they can, you know, they can't see. Um, I, feel, I feel like it's fair to say, though, 
that invisibility existing in this world makes it so places would be guarded against invisibility. Yeah. Depending upon people's resources and all that kind of jazz, then yeah, yeah that would be fair. Yeah. yeah. Okay, anything else? can't think of any questions. Um, I'm just really looking forward to it. Yeah, it's going to be great fun. I am as well. So, um, so let's just run through then. So, I'm going to do some background on the House of Wizards and send that through to Dan and to Martin. I'll send that to you guys. Focus on the family business. Oh, can uh, a predominant color be blue? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to do stuff like that. It's got to be kind of like you know, just a shape and a, and a sketch of it and and how you live and sit within within Waterdeep, so you can kind of you know start to build some some rivalries and some friendships in general context. <laughs> Um, and you are kind of like the innovators, the families, the innovators of kind of animated illusions that you kind of use as essentially cartoons on walls, you know, um, head of the house is one who knows the secrets at the moment you can only maintain, um, you can't maintain or create new ones. So you've got some money's coming in and you got inns throughout the north, a franchise or a chain of inns, etc. Da, da, da. Um, so I'll flesh that out kind of um, Josh I think you and I we just want to talk about those secret characters that you're thinking about and the kind of background there probably worth thinking about kind of what you've been in jail with in terms of with Ben and kind of flesh that out a little bit more um, Ben that, that mission. yeah we need to sit down over a, over a, um, mm. a drink um, and talk about the, uh, the, the secret mission um, you're playing a bard, which is good. Um, Rebecca, you need to get a mic. Um, and also, um, <laughs> think about deity. Um, and also just think about how did you get recruited and, you know, what is exactly your relationship with these guys? Um, uh, shall I flesh out the rival house? Yeah. Can yeah, I'll, I'll send that through to you guys. Give it some thought. Uh, all I'm going to do is a sketch it and you can guys can plug in what you want to do. Oh, I forgot to ask. Um, I get plus two other languages. What would be what would be a one really good one for spellcasting, and what would be one for dealing with nobility in um, Waterdeep? Do you know? Um, so one for spellcasting would probably be Elven. Um, uh, yeah, Elven, Draconic, um, Thoras, which well, is abjur abjuration is what I'm going for. So would any anything be a better or worse for that not especially I don't think um, not that I'm aware of though Undermountain might be like the language that would be useful for this is blah um <laughs> Thoras which is kind of like one for like Waterdeep Noble would be Toft because that's a language right <laughs> is it <laughs> no. Um what do you of wine. <laughs> yeah. Elven would be a good one for water deep nobility. Um And El also made the best like some of the best abjuration magic with mythos and stuff, didn't they? Um Yeah. The street streets yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just say yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> I'd say draconic would be something that you would probably have have picked up through study. Well, I, I do know what Bissell would become. Yeah, yeah, Bissell. Oh, dabbling in the dark arts. The darts, as we sometimes don't call them. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Uh, uh, uh. And I'm also going to decide by the end of the week on a VTT. Okay. So it will be... Today is the seven Thursday eighteenth, so it will be the second of October when we start, yeah? yeah? I think so. Cool. I reckon that's the case, yeah. Excellent. And it'll be eight till about eleven. About eight till eleven. Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Okay, well cheers guys. Um I'll see what this recording is like. See what the stream's like, actually. Um, we'll take it from there. Okay, uh, Rebecca, any questions from you? <laughs> okay, cool, He's good. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, guys. Um, I'll speak soon.
Yeah. Cheers. Mm. Yeah. Now, when I leave, what normally happens is everybody else stays on and plots against me. So I'll let you do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, that's, no, that's never gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever. All right, cheers, guys.